I mean, back then was super crazy mm -hmm. because the gay community, especially if it was a drag queen, yeah. they would beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> okay, it was, I don't know if I can curse. Oh, Keep okay. going. Here's what's funny, right? Holy I just finished an interview with Ricky Kinnick. So I come into the salon project, this beautiful salon, and all I hear is this and that and kiss my ass and but I don't I don't talk like that. So I felt crushed, right? We have to clean this up. I don't curse. So what I'm expecting is this to be cleaned up totally. This has got to stop, right? Ricky? Ricky! What's up, half centenarians? We are in the salon project. Yes. Just thinking about getting a color. You know what I'm saying? Thinking about getting a little color. Maybe I'll just hurry up and go to that um, salt and pepper. Yeah. Match with you, you Ricky. It's, it looks good on you. It looks good Thank on you. you. So we were just sitting here having a wonderful conversation, Ricky, Kenny, and I, but he is probably going to give you more information than I care to right now because I don't want to steal his thunder. But I'll let you introduce yourself to the half you centenary. I'm not fam. worried about you stealing anything. Come on. So no, we don't, don't worry want, about it. No, I want you <laughs> to introduce yourself okay. and then. Let, I'll trample all over you then after that. There you go. Yeah. My name is Ricky Kennig. I'm a born and bred New Yorker, grew up in the beauty space. Retail was my expertise and just finding the right things to make shit happen. Make sure, that, see, that's what I'm talking about. But you know what's really funny? You That humility of it, because you like did like some major things before people were even really doing it, such as now, I'm, I'm sure, all of us out there remember Sally's and, you know, mm. we had those Conair um, hair dryers and all Bonics. that kind of stuff. Yes, electronics and all that. But you set up shop and people would come in and get like all kinds of stuff, makeup, hair care and some other things, too. So yeah. you were setting tone for what we're doing now. Well, you know, I mean, fortunately, I, it was timing mm -hmm. and an understanding of what was going on. Right. And it was the wild, wild west. There yeah. was no such thing as beauty products. Mm -hmm. You know, you had, I remember the first professional hair care item was Bedell Sassoon. I remember that. Yeah. Right. So, I and that. it was a, a whole transition mm -hmm. and I just was very blessed to be born into it. Mm -hmm. And I was on the front line since I was like 13 years old. Yes, because it started, you were saying before, this was your father. You, you yeah, came my on dad, the heels of your dad, correct. right? My dad had a similar business. He mm -hmm. was going more towards health and beauty aids mm -hmm. and pharmacy. Right. I oh. saw an opportunity in more of the models, Got the it. stylist, mm -hmm. and transgender. Yeah. You know, even back then, right. that was, you know. When was this? What year are you talking about right now? 89, 90, okay. 91. All right. It was where men were not comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, society was not comfortable either with, you know, that. And we would get men that had razor stubble. And that right. was one of the hardest things was to create okay. and find concealers that were really, really thick. For that community is what you're talking Correct. about. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And um, it was, uh, gay pride was not so popular, mm -hmm. you know, because again, it was limited back then. But we, for the most part, created Halloween because oh. Halloween was a holiday where all of us would get dressed up. Mm -hmm. So to have transgender, gay, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you were able to dress up and there's a second holiday for right, you. Right. And you could do it in the public eye mm -hmm. where it's no problem filming it because it's Halloween. Right. You know, Makes if you sense. did it during gay yeah. pride, you were gay, mm -hmm. you know, and that's was a hard stamp a long time ago. Okay. I mean, back then was super crazy mm -hmm. because the gay community, especially if it was a drag queen, yeah. they would beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> okay, it was, I don't know if I can curse. Oh, Keep okay. going. So they, you know, it's not like now, it's they're all prissy. Yeah. Back then, they were the ones you had to worry about mugging you. Wow. What do you know? Okay, so, okay. That's something that's new to me. Like really? the whole oh. yes, but I mean, I, I didn't grow up in New York, and we didn't have well, that kind of. Um, I don't even know if we even paid attention back well, there then. There was we a specific area, too. Okay, and it's gotcha. called the Meatpacking District okay. now that everybody knows. Okay. And it was all meat supply stores. Okay. And at night, it was all drag queens, and hookers. That was it. Wow. But you saw a niche for that market. I, yeah. I was fascinated, yeah. not like sexually. Yeah. I mean, I was just fascinated is how the hell do they have the balls to do this? Right. And right. 
I saw that they would need a lot of makeup. Mm -hmm. They would do their nails. Right. They would do their hair. I mean, they really put all of their money into their look nice. to yeah. make more money. So yeah. there was only a few stores that catered to them in the you know the early '90s. All right. So let me ask you this. So with all of the um, experience you were having at that time, the experiences that you were having, you were you know making your own way. Give us something that, um, like, one of the best things or best people you work with, like um, music videos or things like that. Do you have any really wicked, crazy videos? Well, I probably stories? have a few hundred. Okay, but just I, I, you narrow know, it down but for me. Still, the one that I've been using the most is, mm -hmm. to me, still great because she made a comeback. Mm -hmm. um, in 89, when uh, MTV started... Mm -hmm. There was this young girl that came in, you know, like a little ghetto girl, but everybody was ghetto mm -hmm, then, you mm -hmm. know. Um, she came in and we, she wanted a wig. We only had, I think, a blue one. Mm -hmm. And she said, do you have any pink ones? And I said, no, but I can get it. What do you want? Yeah. So she asked for nine bob wigs. Okay. Pink bob wigs. And I didn't know who the girl was. She paid. I gave her a discount. Right. It was Little Kim, her first video wow. on MTV. Wow. And... I remember that only because, like a couple of years ago, she came back into the the, the light. She has, yeah, you she's know, trending. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then this it makes me think about Foxy Brown came in and mm -hmm. got into a fist fight with the girl. She was like super ghetto, what? and you know, so yeah, there yeah. was so many different things. I remember like Lindsay Lohan came in the store, uh -huh. all whacked out of her head and she had like cops wow, working for yeah. her so we ended up letting her work behind the register so she could film it i mean it was just endless i mean so yeah every but day. you were in the position where you were located in places where all of this all these people yeah. lived or i started out my first store was at 718 broadway which was between astor place mm -hmm. and fourth street and there were probably about five or six record companies in that two block radius wow, okay and it was prime real estate. Yeah. It was right in front of NYU. Everybody went there. Yeah. Again, this is before Soho. Soho didn't exist until around 93, 94. Okay. So I was in a triple A location yeah. and being there, you know, not being an owner that sat in the office or was hmm. away and just looking at my investment. Yeah. I was a worker and they used to think it was funny that a man, that a, a manager of a store mm -hmm named Ricky, worked at Ricky's. I didn't tell them that I was the owner. <laughs> right. I was comfortable. Okay. I mean, I was, right. you know, I was just doing what I could. Okay. So this thing, so you, you do all of this stuff, you open these stores, you grow it to how many stores? I think it was like 28 or 29. Okay, 28, I mean, 29 stores, right? Right at 30. What happens, you know, now that you look back, if you decide to get out, do you decide you want to do something different? Because you were just saying how yeah, you start little, something... Bust tricky, your balls and tricky thing. I mean, the situation changed situation for changed. the okay. better or worse, mm -hmm. um, and things happened. So I really had no choice yeah. for the most part okay. of making some decisions and moving on. Yeah. Um, and you know, fortunately, I look at it is that it pushed me to where I was for a reason. Right. Because if I would have. I probably would have kept investing and building yeah. the business, yeah. and this pandemic would have shut me down. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, Things happen for a reason, right? They do happen for a reason. Yes. 100%. Yeah. So let me ask you now. So you are now at a place where you're getting more comfortable with the consultancies and things yeah, like that. Yeah. How do you how do you how do you um, phrase your life right now? Like, how are you living your best life, Ricky? Um, well, I'm blessed, you know, yeah. with healthy kids mm -hmm. and phenomenal kids and yeah. great exes and stuff like that. And that's later on in life you understand and appreciate that more than ever absolutely yeah um yeah. some of the other stuff are trade-offs you know um i have you know amazing kids mm -hmm. okay so maybe there's less work or whatever i mean i don't know i just go with the flow i mean yeah. i wish i was able to give you a whole like uh, you don't know yeah i mean I just, i'm just thinking like if you look at your life because you've done a lot you've you've um set the bar and you've gone after things and you started things and you did them and now when you look at on this side of life, because what I'm looking at, like as a half centenarian, we've gone through, we've got, we've grabbed, you know, grabbed this wisdom and we're sharing it with our kids and grandkids and things like that. What is it about life right now? Or what, let me ask you this way then, what would you tell your 25 year old self looking back? Simple. I mean, I would just say, save your money. <laughs> you know, that would be the first thing because yeah. without that, 
you know, in today's times, you can't borrow money. Right. And you don't want to borrow money. Right. And it's a little bit different. And I've been blessed. I've only worked for myself yeah. most of my life. Now I'm working for a company and they're really nice. And, you know, the CEO mm -hmm. is educated in the yeah. business. So it makes my job so much easier. Yeah. Um, but as a 25 year old, I mean, it's so, everybody says the same thing, you know, from where they would have bought real estate, blah, blah, blah. I, I liked everything that yeah, I did. Yeah. The only thing was I wish I would have saved more money mm. earlier on. Yeah. But then I look at the trade-offs is one of the reasons why I am the way that I am and people mm -hmm. seem to like my whole, you know, mm -hmm. well-being is that I kept reinvesting. Yeah. You know, I would take yeah. people out to dinner. I treated everybody in the store like they were partners right. when I only had one store. You know, I did yeah. so many different things that the average person didn't do. A lot of times people are only concerned with their own pockets. Yes, I exactly. didn't really um, believe in that. You know, now thinking back, I wish I would have, mm -hmm. but that wasn't me. That's not who I am. But that's so good. Like you, you're at the age where you, that you are now, but you don't have any regrets. Like you didn't, you don't have anything mm -hmm. to look back on your 25 year old self and say, I would have done this, you know, yeah. but there are some small things. Yeah. Some people say, especially, but I do think that's important though. Telling 25 year olds and going back to your 25 year old, just save more money. Yeah. You know, if that's one small thing you could say to yourself, if that's all you have, that's money, all. you win it. Yeah. You're yeah good. I don't, um, I don't regret yeah. anything. You know, anything that I screwed up and I spent years mm -hmm. apologizing and correcting, even oh, though right. it, was, yeah. uh, it wasn't called for, I needed to get it out of my mm -hmm. system. Do you have any mentees, anyone you work with, if you had to? Yeah, in yeah, different in, in different in, arenas. In different area, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have some amazing people. Okay. I mean, the owner of Supreme, yeah. you know, he. I've been friends with him for 30 something yeah. years. I have another guy who is a, a money guy and is a dream. Yeah. You know, he's actually mentored the people that I am super close with. Yeah. I so, wanted to stop right here for yeah. a second. You have like a hobby that you, the shoes and uh, the, I used to. I used you, to. You until, don't do it anymore? Okay. No, I mean, I'm older yeah. now, okay? And it was just kind of weird talking yeah. to 16 year olds 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, not the most comfortable situation right. when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Because s with sneakers mm -hmm. and street clothing, you don't know who you're speaking to. Yeah. And everything is online. Yeah. You know, I was fortunate enough to meet Lou, mm -hmm. you know, and we somehow hit it off really quickly. Yeah. Um, and it was easy, you know, and I, I definitely thing, met a right? handful of people that were like that. But then, you know, some of the weird things yeah you but know you a know, 16 year old kid is yeah. just not normal for a 59 year old to have a conversation with but that's a cool hobby yeah. though but look you know that's yeah but like, i had to outgrow it okay you know yeah, i used cool to hobby. be a collector mm -hmm. um now you don't collect anymore no now okay. i mean as similar as lou is that we buy the stuff that we mm -hmm. like and yeah. we're going to wear yeah and not look at it as to resell it got it you know so like the first thing i do with sneakers i throw the box out yeah. so it al already loses value gotcha okay and I just am a lot more pickier. I'm more, I, I prefer cool, helping though. people out. Yeah. You know, especially with like some of the clothes and sneakers that they can't get, they have no access mm -hmm. to. Whatever access that I do, I try to help them out. I don't make yeah. money on them. Yeah. I mean, like Lou, I probably lost a few hundred, you know, on it just because he was a nice guy and I didn't <laughs> right, care. Right. You know, I mean, and it wasn't it was, so weird talking to him. No, yeah. not at all. That's right. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And there were a handful of people, but yeah. there's also a lot more weirdos. Yeah. Um, Joel Warren, thank you so much for allowing us to come to this beautiful, beautiful salon project here in Manhattan. It's just wonderful. I am so grateful for all the wonderful knowledge and gems that you've shared with us. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is totally my pleasure. And to also, if there's anybody out there that needs some advice or some help, I'm not uh, looking to charge you or yeah. anything like that. I, I'm willing to learn as well on yeah. what your needs are. Yeah. And if there is something, some sort of a business thing, we could talk about that secondary, but feel free to reach out to me. You know, it's free to awesome. ask. The only thing I could say is no. no. That's right, that's right. And I'm just gonna let that land right there. If you don't ask, you don't get help. He's already extended his offer. If you need help with something, man, please yeah. reach out. He's done powerful things and made some connections and he already said he has connections so you guys follow ricky ask him for help if that's what you need like comment share um really lean into what you are trying to do with yourselves find people like-minded that can help you be safe be careful and we will see you soon
Thank you.